Well, uh, um, in 1991, uh, well, late 1990, um, I was, let's see, I was uh, 59 at the time, and I, I was offered a trip of a pediatric um, um, a university pediatric department. Um, and I was offered a job in industry in France. Um, after some consideration, I decided that it would be more interesting uh, to um, uh, work for a company that was developing vaccines. Uh, also, I might say that moving to France was definitely an attraction. Um, and I think I was absolutely right, because uh, making vaccines, as I said earlier in this discussion, uh, has, is, is really now focused uh, in vaccine manufacturers. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I discovered was the uh, tremendous precision that is required. Uh, in a in a in a company that is one has dot all the i's cross all the t's uh, and uh, document everything very carefully uh, so that one can obtain licenses from regulatory authorities mm -hmm. so i learned uh, a great deal uh, working in uh, uh, at uh, Sanofi Pasteur at the time um, the, uh, of course, uh, there are restrictions. One has to uh, do what the company, um, what the company's goals are, mm -hmm. uh, so that you don't have as much independence in a company. Nevertheless, uh, so to speak, that's where the action is, and uh, I learned a great deal uh, working at Sanofi. Okay. And your experience starting your own consultancy, vaccine consultancy firm? Well, so, you know, some years later, um, I, I no longer had a laboratory that I could, um, where I could work. And of course, I reached a certain seniority. <laughs> and so uh, it, um, I don't know, want to quit, uh, despite the preferences of my wife. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, uh, um, uh, I simply let people know that I was available to give advice. And uh, whether it's good advice or bad, I'll let them judge. But um, I now give advice to whomever. Uh, that is companies, biotechs, nonprofits, universities. Um, it's a great deal of fun. Mm. So um, a lot of research is, or more research is being done in Africa to solve our own health problems. So um, you experience consulting for different groups. Do you also consult for governmental or per state or company or institutes? So we know there's a well, body of research that's being generated, but is it going to the policymakers in our own countries? Well, yes, I, <laughs> I I certainly don't refuse to uh, uh, to give advice to policy makers. Mm -hmm. um, I've, uh, I mean, I, of course, I know a number of people in, in South Africa. I don't recall having been asked by the South African government to give advice, but um, uh, I work with. Uh, Entities in the U.S. government and the French government, uh, the British government, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I'm and I, I'm sure that that other people uh, in my category also are, are happy to give advice uh, to, to governments, and uh, and of course the role of governments is is critical because if a vaccine is available but not 
used by government, obviously, uh, the d disease is not prevented. Yes. And unfortunately, that has been the case in, in many developing countries where mm. uh, the amount of money spent on health uh, has been insufficient. Well, that's a difficult question to answer because it depends on the, the individual uh, and uh, his or her particular uh, interests. Um, uh, I do think that it's important for someone interested in vaccines to, to uh, accumulate a background in basic immunology. Uh, I think that's really important. Um, and uh, also um, um, to have some appreciation of epidemiology because uh, epidemiology essentially drives uh, vaccine development. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I'm reflecting what I did in my own career, uh, but um, at a certain point, an individual may decide that uh, he or she wants to um, uh, specifically develop uh, vaccines, and that can be done to an extent in, in um, basic science laboratories, but as I said before, eventually has to be transferred to a, um, a company that's able to produce it. Uh, so careers are available on both sides mm -hmm. of the divide. And um, I, I, I don't think I can recommend generally what people should do. It depends on their individual talents and, uh, and, and desires. Mm -hmm. But as I, as I said, immunology and epidemiology are the two critical fields which people, um, uh, for which people need to have uh, training. Well, clinician scientist is a rather broad definition, but um, again, I, I, I think that one should acquire uh, training in basic immunology and, uh, and also uh, preferably uh, to, um, uh, to also accumulate knowledge uh, about uh, the epidemiology of infectious diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, and for that matter, they're, they're clinical manifestations. But, um, you know, people have varying talents and uh, for vaccine development, one needs people who can do clinical trials. Mm -hmm. uh, one needs people who can um, develop uh, facilities that reproducibly uh, produce a, uh, a vaccine. Uh, and, and I, I stress that because vaccines are biologicals, they're not chemicals, mm -hmm. and a lot of things can go wrong in the way of production if, uh, uh, if one has not developed adequate methodology. Okay. Well, the Epidemic Intelligence Service was a wonderful experience and uh, is, is available at, uh, at CDC. Um, and they also, for that matter, train uh, foreign, um, um, foreigners who are interested in, that, in epidemiology. Um, the, 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 I, the, actually, the first work I did was on anthrax. Uh, now, that is not something I've continued to pursue but um, I was able, as luck, or good or bad luck has it, I was able to study an outbreak of um, inhalation anthrax mm -hmm. and learned a great deal about 
it's epidemiology and uh, and immunology and and uh, clinical uh, symptoms. Uh, and then also, while I was in EIS, worked on polio. So it was a broad experience, uh, which was critical uh, to to my uh, development. It enabled me, uh, as luck would have it, to do both laboratory work and uh, epidemiology. Okay. 